Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. In today's video, we'll show you a cat that is hella green. The one that is banned in Australia, the one that doesn't look like a cat at all, and the one whose ears would remind you of Satan. But let's start with Canadian Lynx. This species of cat is definitely trouble. All lynx fiercely defend themselves when cornered, and although they typically avoid people, they may attack a human if threatened. The lynx are dangerous because they are shadow killers. There are rarely any signs that the lynx put up a fight. Once they've crept up on their prey, they strike quickly to finish off their hunt. Depending on where it lives, the lynx feeds on birds, beavers, rabbits, hares, rodents, or deer. Some even eat birds such as grouse. Their bite featuring sharp teeth is their most dangerous feature, but don't dismiss their sharp claws either. The lynx is not an overly large predator, so while they can certainly kill a full-size human, they are at risk of receiving severe injury. They usually avoid humans, so you should also leave them alone in the wild. If not, then you'll be solely responsible for what would happen. They also carry rabies, though that's one more reason to avoid them. Jeffrey's Cat The name is intriguing, isn't it? So let's first talk about it. The cat got its name from the famous naturalist Jeffrey St. Hilaire. In size and appearance, Jeffrey's cat is similar to a domestic tabby cat. However, it's one of the smallest wild cats native to South America. While cute, these wild cats are excellent hunters able to climb up high trees and catch prey in the water. They don't make good pets and their existence is under threat because hunters kill them for the fur. Believe me when I say that you don't want to be in their bad books. Jeffrey cats are carnivorous. They predominantly prey on small organisms, but will prey on other organisms such as birds, snakes, insects, amphibians, and obviously fish. The Jeffrey's cat is nocturnal and a solitary hunter. It contacts conspecifics only during the mating season. Bobcats Well, what to say about them? We all know how notorious their reputation is. You guys know that unlike the other cats, bobcats have the strength to kill humans considering they can take down a fully grown deer. That's impressive for a cat that weighs as much as a medium sized dog. Still, they can be aggressive when provoked and won't hesitate to defend themselves with sharp claws and teeth. In general, it's not legal to own a bobcat unless you got a permit. Seriously though, a fully developed bobcat has claws that are one inch long and teeth that are one inch long. Bobcats are primarily solitary animals. Like most other cats, they rarely share territory with other cats of the same gender. They mark their territories to keep other bobcats out. They tend to be about twice as big as a domestic cat and smaller than a mountain lion. Bobcats are wild and aggressive species that prefer woodlands and coniferous or mixed forests as they get damn erratic during hot temperatures. Serval No, this isn't a cheetah. Many people often mistake it for a cheetah due to their spotted coat. With a weight of 20 to 40 pounds, the serval can be quite dangerous when provoked or cornered. They've got a nearly 50% kill rate when hunting, spray to mark their territory, and have a scary hiss. Due to all these things, they are banned in several states of the US while a serval cat can bind with a human, they generally are one-person animals and don't accept anyone else intruding their bond. Do you know that some can even be found in a zoo? The cats are strong with the fast reflexes and they even use their teeth and claws during play. They can knock over large items, scratch and tear furnishings, jump extremely high, and crash into things during their many excursions. Serval cats for homes with small children are not recommended as they play with their teeth and nails, and while playing with children, they can be too rough or see them as games or, or prey. Egyptian Mao Egyptian Maos are one of the most beautiful and oldest domestic cat breeds in the world. They're said to have originated from ancient Egypt, where their forefathers were worshipped in temples. This cat isn't particularly aggressive, but protective. The Egyptian Mao bonds strongly with family but it kinda hates strangers. The only time the Egyptian Mao becomes particularly aggressive is when it feels its belongings are being threatened. For example, an Egyptian Mao will hiss, growl, or even swat at someone's hand if they dare touch the cat's toy, bed, 
or even its food dish. Physically, they're strong and agile, they're muscular and slender. The breed does not fancy any loud noises and gets quite irritated if somebody disrupts their peace. Caracal Caracal is particularly dangerous, especially to people with small dogs or other cats. I mean, just look at their ears. They're capable of doing significant harm, especially to a child. They can also certainly harm an adult if they feel threatened. The Caracal cat is one of Africa's ultimate hunters, a stealthy cat with an exceptional ability to hunt out prey in the savanna. These cats have sharp fangs that have the ability to rip apart and kill their prey by sheer biting force. Its retractable claws are for slashing at possible threats and sticking into a rival's flesh to cause harm. Although the smaller members of the wild cats lack brute force, they make up for it with astounding agility. The caracal cat can leap as high as 13 feet into the air, frequently after silently stalking and then sprinting down its prey. The caracal can reach rates of 50 miles per hour when in full flight, which is great considering a cat. These smaller wildcats debunk the misconception that bigger ones own the market on sprinting speed. The cat's meal usually consists of a mixture of rodents, birds, rabbits, but it doesn't shy away from the odd bulkier bodied bounties such as a gazelle or an antelope. Ocelot This wild cat is called an ocelot. While they're not supposed to be house cats, many people throughout the world have them in their homes. This breed was born to be wild, so domesticating them is kind of unfair. That's because this breed is very independent and does not respond well to commands. Adopting this cat may be a dangerous game to play, but for some, the risk is worth the reward of having a unique pet. As a whole, the ocelot doesn't make a good exotic house cat. These dangerous cats are used to hunting all the time and mark their territory with urine and feces. So if you don't want to clean the poo-poo every morning, avoid them at all costs. Moreover, ocelots can be quite destructive, like clawing the walls, tearing apart furniture, and chewing everything in sight. So while ocelots aren't as big as some giant dog breeds, they're far more dangerous than your usual house cat. Sphinx now what kind of cat is this? I mean to say, doesn't it look uh, kind of weird? Ross depicts my feelings in a perfect manner. What, what is what, what the hell is that? It's, it's a cat. That is not a cat. Why is it inside out? Turns out, that is a cat. Yeah guys, you better believe it. Sphinx are hyperactive cats that need plenty of playtime. They're also incredibly intelligent. However, high intelligence coupled with low stimulation could result in them lashing out of boredom. Constant entertainment is necessary to avoid aggressive behavior. The Sphinx breed requires much attention, as they are hairless, keeping them warm is quite a challenge for their owners. They are very needy cats and have been known to act out aggressively when they don't get what they want. To keep their sharp claws retracted, it's recommended to abide by these felines rules, keep them warm keep their food bowls full. Yeah, it's a fact, if you adopt a cat, they own you, man. Even though they won't win first prize in a beauty contest, Sphinx cats are very loyal to their owners. However, they do have a temperament and need plenty of mental and physical stimulation to avoid destructive behavior. Manu Also known by the name of Palace, these are small wild cats with long and dense light gray fur. People see the appearance and believe that it might be in the same character to a domestic cat. I'm afraid they'll be disappointed. All small wild cats can be quite fierce. Palace cats, while adorable to look at, should not be kept as pets. Not only is it difficult for them to survive at low altitudes, they're truly wild animals. A palace cat kept as a pet would be truly miserable and would probably make you miserable too. To tame a manual is really hard work. Sometimes it's almost impossible to do. There will be lots of scratches, some nasty bites, and possible infections which need to be quickly treated with antibiotics. One problem with this small wild cat is that it looks quite cute and fluffy, so people want to adopt it. But little do they know that once the cats grow, they start using their huge sharp claws and teeth against other pets or family members. So think a lot before getting a manual cat. Chaucy Cat 
Even though this cat looks pretty harmless, let me tell you, that isn't what you think it is. Okay, let me elaborate. This creature is the product of a hybrid crossing between domesticated cats and the jungle cat. As you know, the jungle cat is from Egypt, so they wanted to recreate something similar to their mummified ancestors. The result ended up as this high-energy exotic creature known as the Chaucy. Interbreeding wild cats for a few generations does not make them domesticated. Throwing a few generations of domestic cat bloodlines in the mix does nothing to counter the evolutionary process that over thousands of years created these wild cats in the first place. Hybrid cats are still genetically programmed to be wild. This domesticated cat can get up to 25 pounds in weight and 22 inches in length. And according to multiple cat breed websites, they can be temperamental at best and are not recommended for families with young kids. This large cat can astonish you with its intellect and athleticism. Like other hybrid breeds, the first few generations might exhibit the aggressive tendencies and behavior of their wild parents. Savannah Cat You ever wanted a mini tiger to keep your company? Then you might fall in love with the Savannah that is a cross between the medium-sized serval and a domestic cat. Savannah cats are among the largest domesticated cats with an average weight of 8 to 20 pounds and 13 to 20 inches in length without the tail. They're agile, adventurous, and energetic felines that don't make good lap cats. Savannah cats are banned in Australia due to their large size and the threat they pose to the wildlife. All breeds of the Savannah cats are banned in several states in the United States, including Georgia, Hawaii, Nebraska, and Rhode Island. This could be due to the feline's naturally independent nature. This leopard-looking animal fits best inside a home where they can have ample space to themselves. If you've never owned a cat before, this isn't a perfect breed for you. Even experienced owners will make several trips to the store for band-aids with this pet. Bengal Cat You must have heard a lot about these cats. Sure, they're beautiful, but a constant reminder that they are wild in nature, and this is because they're a mix of leopard and house cat. You have to ensure that they're fourth generation Bengal cats to be sure that they are properly domesticated. They can develop behavior and territorial issues or extreme play aggression if their basic needs are not met. If you're looking for a low maintenance lap cat, the Bengal cat is not the one for you. This is yet another cat that does not like to be picked up or held much and if cuddled against their will, dangerously sharp claws could come out in full force. However, if you're someone who grew up with siblings or don't mind some roughhousing here and there, this breed could actually be for you. The second generation Bengals are banned in some USA states and restricted in others. They also have strong hunting instincts. They might not try to eat you, but the same can't be said for birds, hamsters, rabbits, and guinea pigs. Abyssinian Cat Abyssinian cats are a mysterious breed with a lot of speculation surrounding their origin as no official records exist of where they came from. Some argue that they were the cats of the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, whilst others would insist that they were imported to the UK from Abyssinia, now called Ethiopia. These cats are known to be very affectionate with their owners, but the same can't be said for kids or strangers, so always keep an eye on them. They're a highly social breed and can be demanding of attention, not a snuggly lap cat, Abyssinians are constantly active and in motion, either exploring or playing. Sometimes playtime can be mistaken for aggression. If you put your fingers under a blanket and wiggle them around, all bets are off. Your cat's gonna think it's a mouse and will tear everything apart to get it. So don't try to be over smart with them. Many people buy cats without researching if their pet will be compatible with their lifestyle, only to discover that there's no bonding. Unfortunately, this often leads to the cat being returned discarded or sent to a rescue home. Mekong Bobtail As you can guess by the name, this cat breed came from Thailand. The Mekong Bobtail is a smart and savvy cat, so owners have to make sure to keep up with their cat's demands. These cats aren't known for their quiet natures, so if you're looking for a peaceful companion who enjoys long relaxing naps, sometimes stretching for hours and hours, then the Mekong Bobtail is definitely not for you. Though they have a lot of energy, these cats are low maintenance in terms of activity. They'll jump, climb, and explore on their own, but they do like to play with their owners and receive attention. 
you have to give them a place and some time to vent out their energy. Although quite normal, they get quite frustrated. You know what I mean. They have so many sex-related behavior problems such as spraying, marking, aggression, increased vocalization, it can be reduced or eliminated by age-appropriate spaying or neutering. Siberian Cat As the name suggests, these cats are native to Siberia, the region that is famous for its harsh and cold winters. These medium-sized cats were certainly built for their environment in the forests of icy Siberia. Siberian cats have long, triple-layered, water-resistant coats and sturdy, muscular bodies that seem heavy compared to their size. Siberian cats are super social animals who adore their owners and generally don't like being left alone too long. But they do get weary of strangers. That's because the presence of another person makes them judgmental and jealous. These pets are best fit for a home where the owners are usually around and enjoy engaging in play. But then again, any item can become a plaything for this clever cat. So keep jewelry or other potentially intriguing items out of its sight, as it can harm you and your cat. British Longhair These fluffy cats are adorable and oh so huggable. However, if you're even slightly allergic to cats, stay as far away as possible. These high maintenance cats require loads of brushing and with that hair flying around in the air, it could be someone's worst allergy nightmare. Despite their love of the brush, British Longhairs do not like to be held much. In an instant, this breed can turn moody and temperamental, so beware make sure to brush up on cat social cues. They also have the tendency to be independent, which makes them appear stubborn. They're like those persistent grandpa who won't budge. British Longhairs are also known to be very curious. They may explore your closet or watch you while you're cooking in the kitchen. Since British Longhairs are so friendly, they make excellent family pets. They like to cuddle on the couch or in bed, but don't particularly enjoy being picked up in hell. So if you pick them up and start giving them those unwanted smooches, you'll be very likely to get several nail marks on your body. The Jungle Cat The Jungle Cat is a medium small cat and is considered the largest remaining species of the wild cat. Jungle cats are solitary in nature, yeah they don't give two craps about humans. Their natural enemies are crocodiles, bears, wolves, and other larger felines such as tigers. Now oh, come on. The cat which has made such vicious predators his enemy should definitely be avoided. When countered by a threat, the jungle cat will vocalize before engaging in attack, producing small roars, a behavior uncommon for domestic cats. They're a bunch of stalkers, and when it comes to food, this means that they hunt by stalking their prey, followed by a sprint or a leap. That's because their ears help them in pinpointing the location of prey. It also jumps into the air to catch birds the way the caracal does. They also have the ability to boldly leap over the ground and onto their prey. Jungle cats' front and back feet all have claws, enabling them to easily climb trees both going up and going down. The jungle cat is most prevalent in India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And now let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. You guys were waiting for this, weren't you? Today's subscriber pick is a picture of a Siberian cat named Vasya. The story behind this is that this normal Siberian cat with gray fur was turned into a green goblin by a Russian cat groomer to turn it into a dragon with green fur. The feline creature was shaved and colored to give the resemblance. Siamese Cats Siamese cats are known for being one of the most aggressive and territorial out of all cat breeds, and if you own any other pets beside them, oh my, they'll get so jealous and show massive tantrums that you'll curse the day you thought to adopt them. Siamese cats are very needy, so if they feel like they're not receiving enough attention from their owners, they will potentially lash out. This breed absolutely adores cuddles and care. In fact, Siamese cats are a pet that will take the time to bond with every member of a family. However, if someone tries to interrupt their snuggle time, you'll incur their wrath. This could pose an issue for households with small children. It is also tricky if you happen to be someone the cat decides not to bond with. Siamese have quite the notorious reputation for suffocating babies, 
being aggressive, and acting in a jealous manner. Moreover, Siamese cats aren't shy to express their opinion about everything in a loud voice and can be very clingy. So if you guys are ready to put up with all this, buy this cat, by all means. That's it for today. Thank you for watching the whole video. See you next time.